God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The text for our message is our Old Testament reading, and I'll read just a portion of that one more time. I have set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. This is our text. Please pray with me. Dear Lord Jesus, we pray by the power of your Holy Spirit, open our minds and our hearts and fill us that we would see in the sign that was provided and in so many signs that you provide the nature of our God, his true nature of mercy, his true nature of grace, his true nature of love. Over and against natural disaster and destruction, this is what you truly desire for your people. And you showed us that very thing as you gave us yourself. In your name, amen. So, I think we've all seen terrible rainstorms and we've all seen uh, windstorms where there are branches and limbs and even trees that have fallen. Um, And I think more and more as we watch the news we're seeing You know, lots of terrible things going on in our world. The typhoon that hit China last night, we also heard or hearing about the wildfires on the West Coast, in Oregon, in California, and also in Canada. You probably, you know, watched as uh, the smoke from that kind of drifted over Wisconsin and kind of gave us some hazy days and also some uh, odd effects on the moon at night. Uh, And as we see all of those things happening, I want to ask you, what does God have in mind as he's allowing these things? Okay? Really? Okay? And, And I want you, as you think about that, we can talk about the reasons, the physical reasons why these things happen. You know, for instance, the wildfires. If I ask you, what is the reason for the wildfires, you'd say, well, it's very dry, it's very windy, there's lightning strikes, starts a fire, and the fire spreads quickly because everything's dry. That's the physical reason. But what's the spiritual reason? Spiritual reason is sin and God's reason in allowing it is repent look at everything that could happen every path of destruction that's on its way and recognize life is tenuous and as life is tenuous the first and foremost relationship we need to have Intact is our relationship with God. And and that being said, I want to ask you then, what was the reason for the flood in Genesis? What was the real reason? Sin. And and I want you to hear it. In Genesis chapter 6, God says this at that time. The Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and listen carefully to this phrase, and that every intention of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Can you imagine what God's thinking at that moment? This is out of control. This is so out of control, unless I do something, all mankind is going to be lost. All the earth is going to be lost to sin, wickedness, and evil, and therefore I have to do something. Even though 
it went against his nature, even though it went against the very inner being that God is, of love, of grace and mercy, and even though this is not what he really wanted to do, he was left without choice. He was left without choice because every intention of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. In verse 6, And the Lord regretted that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him to his heart. So the Lord said, I will blot out man whom I have created from the face of the land, man and animals and creeping things and birds of the heavens, for I am sorry that I have made them. Read verse 8 with me. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. There's one man and his family that God looked on and said, I have hope to be able to start again. I have hope to be able to start anew. Because this isn't somebody who's gone with every intention of his heart being evil continually. This is someone who truly loves me and truly desires to remain faithful. If it wasn't for Noah, not one of us would be here. But the point is, God showed mercy. Even though the flood was devastating, even though the flood destroyed the earth and aged it beyond what we can really think, there's a reason why scientists today tell you that the earth is billions of years old. The devastation of the flood had so much damage on the surface and core of the earth that it aged it hundreds of millions of years in one year's time. Okay. Have you ever seen a person who had a really, really, really bad year and when you see them, they look like they've aged 10 years in just a short time? Okay. That's what the flood did to the earth. It aged it beyond what we even have the capacity to appreciate or understand. And as we see that, does God still care? Because he wipes this all out. And yet, it grieves him to do so. And we see that grief in our Old Testament reading. So now go to the Old Testament reading, a nail man. <laughs> Listen to what it says. God promises, starting in verse 9, Behold, I establish my covenant with you and your offspring after you and with every living creature that is with you, the birds and the livestock and every beast of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. Next page. Next page. Next page. Thank you. I establish my covenant with you that never again will all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood. And never again shall there be a flood that will destroy the earth. And God said, this is the sign of the covenant I make between me and you and every creature that is with you for all future generations. There's two phrases that are repeated frequently. Two words. Never again. And my covenant with you. You think God is emphasizing something here. This grieved me so that I'm never going to do this again. Never again. You heard me say something a year ago in May after we reopened after the pandemic. And I made a promise to you at that time. Never again will I close this congregation for any reason whatsoever. Never again. And I'm going to issue that promise to you again. I promise. Never again. I don't care what they do to me. And the point in this is that it grieved me so at that time to do that 
I vowed never to do it again. It grieved God so to do this that he vowed never to do again. Never. And so I'm going to make this promise. I'm going to make this promise, and not only will I make a promise, but I'm going to give you a symbol of that promise so that every time you see it, every time you witness it, you'll remember. Verse 13, I set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth that I will bring clouds over the earth, and the bow is seen in the clouds. I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every creature on, of all flesh, and the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy the earth. God makes a promise. For what reason? Because God loves us. Because God desires to show us mercy before punishment. God desires to give us grace before destruction. That's what the rainbow is a message of. God's mercy, God's grace, and God's love. But what has happened? You would think that after the flood, the people who had witnessed it and the people who were born generations following would hear the story and remember it and recognize, boy, we need to keep in line before God does this again. But he said never again. So... And I think that's what we're seeing in our world as the rainbow is used for other things. And it's almost mocking God as they use that sign and say, He said you're never going to start to try us again. So we're going to do whatever we want. I want to show a picture. Could you put that picture up, Naomi? This is my niece, Jenny. My niece, Jenny, was the niece who, uh, out of the kindness of her heart, donated her kidney on, me, on my behalf. And that's not why I got her picture up here. But um, my Jenny, uh, Jenny is currently a uh, church secretary in East Troy. And um, before that, she held a different job. And that job was as a trademark or copyright infringement protection agent. That's kind of a long way of saying she protected copyright. I'm going to throw up what she was to protect so you can see what symbol she was supposed to protect. Recognize that? So Jenny had to travel for her job to places where there were motorcycle rallies all over the country, including Sturgis, to enforce trademark copyright on this image because you've probably seen it take people taking this image and putting something else inside that shield or inside that band and passing it off well she would say don't do that here's a legal document you do it again you're in trouble with us God doesn't have a copyright or trademark on the rainbow but God says one thing about mocking him. If you would. Galatians chapter 6. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh, and from that flesh will reap destruction. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. The sign of the rainbow doesn't have the meaning that's assigned to it now. Whose rainbow is this? God's. When we say, yeah, you can use it to whatever you want to use it, uh uh. God says, this is my rainbow. He says that in our Old Testament reading. This is mine. And it holds the meaning for which I originally gave it. That's what the meaning is. And so if anyone's using it for something else, God doesn't care about that. God cares about what its true meaning is. And that's his promise of mercy, of grace, and of love. 
his mercy, his grace, his love for his people. But before God made this promise, he made a different one. And the promise that God made before he made this promise was in Genesis chapter 3. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. Read it with me. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. God's promise was, I'm sending you a Savior. I'm sending you a Savior from sin. And even though from time to time there will have to be things done to bring discipline, I'm still bringing you a Savior to deliver you. I'm still bringing a Savior to free you from sin and to give you life. And so the sign I'm going to give you is the sign of His suffering. The sign I'm going to give you is the sign of His humiliation. The sign I'm going to give you is the sign of His death. The sign I'm going to give you is that which brought you your salvation. So if I were to ask you to look around this sanctuary, could you count all the crosses? Each window on each side has a great big one right in the middle. Jesus on the cross in the back, cross on the baptismal font, two processional crosses, cross on the altar, <coughs> excuse me, cross on the Christian flag, both at the top and in the center, crosses all over the place. Why? For the same reason that in that one scripture reading, God said covenant, 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 covenant. Never again, never again, never again. That is God repeating himself for emphasis. I need you to know I love you. I need you to know my mercy is abundant. I need you to know my grace is real and fully available. I need you to remember. I need you to remember. I need you to remember. I've given out crosses. I've given out all kinds of little reminders. But there's no greater reminder than the cross. And whether we put one in a, in a room in our home, hanging on a wall, whether we wear one on a necklace around our neck, whether we carry one in our pocket, that reminder is important. A reminder that God's mercy, that God's grace, that God's love are abundant and ever available and never go away. So whatever situation in life we're in, we can absolutely be certain of God's love, of God's mercy, of God's grace. He keeps his promise, and he never fails. In Jesus' name, amen. The grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Spirit, be and abide with us all. Amen.